Welcome back everyone, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about how to be a corporate trainer. So when I say corporate trainer, it's corporate technical trainer, okay? Just to be specific there. Now I started my career as a developer and then I moved to corporate training. So now I do both on freelancing basis, development as well as corporate training, apart from YouTube of course. Now one of the questions which I got recently is how to be a corporate trainer. So I went for one of the training and then with a senior guy around 15 years of experience, he wanted to be a trainer. So he wanted to understand how to move from the tech domain or development domain he was more into production now but how to move from that domain to corporate training now the first thing you need as a corporate trainer is the passion for teaching it's not that anyone can teach yes anyone can code but not any, anyone can teach everyone have a different way of learning so i feel trainers they have a different way of learning so they teach the way they learn or they wanted to learn so when i was in my college i wanted to learn things in a different way and that's why I started teaching the way I wanted to learn. Okay, so that worked for me, but maybe it will not work for you. So the first thing is, if you want to be a trainer, make sure that you have a passion for teaching. Okay, don't do it for money purpose. So the first thing you need is passion for teaching. Maybe you have not tried it, so just try it once. Or, so go to some college and give a seminar or teach someone, let's say collect a group of five people and teach. And then you will understand, can you teach or do you have a passion for teaching? In fact, when I was a developer, I got a chance for giving training to my juniors. And that's when I realized that I love teaching more than being a developer. Okay, so I, I enjoy being a developer, but I spend more time in training because I love it. That's my passion. Okay, that's, that's one thing. The second thing you need is the skill set. Okay, now when I say uh, we need a skill set, yes, there are so many people working on Java from last, let's say, five years or 10 years. Now, can you say that these people do know Java for sure? So one of my friends, he was working on Django for, for a long time. And then when I asked the question, you know, how you learn Django and then what are the uh, projects you have built? Then I realized, so actually he was using Django projects. So the projects were built already and then he was doing some modification. So in three years also, he was not able to understand the Django framework properly. Now same goes for Spring framework. So when I go for training for Spring, so I have also taught some experienced developers and then they have worked on Spring for a long time but they don't know the minute stuff about Spring, you know, how exactly AutoWire works behind the scene and then a lot of different stuff. So the first thing you need as a trainer is the complete knowledge. It's not that you have worked on it, but can you deliver the training in step-by-step -step way? Example, if you want to teach AutoWire, do you know how AutoWire works behind the scene? So something like that, you know, so you should be knowing this stuff internally. So the first thing is passion. Second one, skill set. The third one is very, very, very important. I realized that after giving a lot of trainings and that is stamina. Initially, you'll be having a lot of energy, trust me. But the moment you cross, let's say five to six trainings, that's where your body will tell you, you know, something is going wrong because you have to be there you know as a trainer you have to stand there for eight hours I'm okay we have a chair as well you can sit there and give a training but most of the time as a trainer i prefer to stand and deliver because that's how my energy comes out you know you can see my energy while teaching but we can also sit and train it will truly test your strength okay because not just your physical strength your vocal strength as well because you have to speak for eight hours and trust me after giving a session for eight hours, when you when you go back, you don't want to talk to anyone, not with your family as well. Maybe, you know, when I go back home, I just give them reactions, okay? Just facial expression for one or two hours. After that, I, you know, once it is everything is uh, recovered, I then we have a normal chat, but uh, that's one thing. So it will test your strength, the body strength plus vocal strength. The fourth thing, patience. You need a lot of patience when you teach people. The problem is everyone have a different way of learning, right? So you have to give importance to each and every participant. So you're not teaching a bunch of robots where you will just feed the information because everyone have a different understanding of a concept. Maybe some people know it and some people have not even heard that concept before. Uh, so you have to make sure that everyone knows what you're talking about. So what I do in my training is I make sure that everyone is on the same level. Okay, not on the first day, but in the first day, we, we make sure that everyone understands what the basic concept is and what are the prerequisites. So just be on this to be on the same page. And from the next day training, we make sure that we are going with a good pace. Now, how do you know that everyone is understanding what you're saying? So one of the ways you can ask people if you're getting my stuff or yes or no. Otherwise, you can just have a look in their eyes, you know. So normally when people are getting you, they are understanding your concept, they, give you, they will give you eye contact. You can see that happiness in their eyes as well. But if someone is not trying, not understanding your concept or maybe they're avoiding you, you can understand that with, with their, uh, you know, eye movement or facial expression. So you can, you can judge that. And you will learn that with your experience, okay. So once you spend around uh, six, 
six, seven months in training, you understand how that works. Otherwise, that stuff works. You know, have you got the concept? Any questions? So you can you can try that. So these are the things you need to be a trainer. Now, one of the way you can test yourself is by teaching your friends, teaching your juniors, or maybe you maybe making YouTube videos. You know, just make a YouTube video, upload it on YouTube. If everyone liked it, that's great. If no one liked it, that's fine. So those are things you need. But what if you have everything? So let's say you are, you're working for a company or you're a fresher, you want to be a trainer and you have all this. Now you need connections with the corporate. Okay, now that's a difficult part. You know, how can you have a connection with company? Now, first of all, if you are working for a company, that's your best chance. So talk to your trading team. So every company have their own learning and research team. Uh, talk to them, uh, tell them you are interested. In fact, they are looking for people who want to train. Uh, so talk to them, they will give you a chance and that will be your first step. Okay, so uh, give your best there. But what if you don't have a link with companies in that case you have to connect with consultants okay so there are so many consultants who provide trainings you can you can connect with institutes initially let's say NIT, Haptech or maybe there are some there's so, so many companies right we have seed infotech so you can connect with them at least in India so you can connect with them tell them you want to train initially they will give you retail batches now retail batches are batches let's say if you uh, if you want to learn java you will join a class and you will be teaching that class okay so that's a retail batch now once you prove yourself that you can deliver training in a good way these people will send you in corporate okay so you are not actually directly going there but you're going through a company or a third party but that's fine initially that's how you can uh, make your mark now there's one thing important here when you say corporate trainer we have a generic trainer and then we have a niche trainer now generic trainer is more of uh, teaching the basic programming language teaching software engineering skills or uh, testing so all these basic level trainings uh, so when i go for training so initially i used to get all the induction batches so you know every time someone hires i have to go there and i have to teach them that's a generic training like uh, you can start with that but i will suggest you to upgrade yourself so that you can give niche training example let's say on big data uh, let's say machine learning ai blockchain now the moment you go there you become a very special trainer okay uh, because the payment will go up you can't imagine your payment you just have to give the number they will give you that payment uh, next you will get good corporate clients they will not because see, the moment you are a generic trainer company will pay you less and expect more on the other hand when you're a niche trainer they will pay you more and expect less because even they don't know how to implement that technology so you're the god for them whatever you say they will say okay we will we'll try that so you are more of a trainer and a consultant so make sure that you go to that domain it will take some time it's not that you will do it in one year but make sure that you do that move from generic trainer to a niche trainer now you can also join a company so let's say well, some of my friends they work for a service-based company as a trainer so you can be a full-time trainer there the only drawback is they will pay you less and you have to work hard a lot harder and that might affect your teaching skills or teaching technique on the other hand you can be a corporate trainer where you have your own timing you can you can do a batch anywhere you want the only drawback is you will earn when you get a batch okay so that's one thing so i would suggest start with it okay there's a long journey it's not that uh, difficult but start with it so make sure that you have those four skill set and join in a small institute start giving training and then you can be a great corporate trainer i will try to make some more videos on this you know how to train and then uh, different things uh, let me know if you need those videos in the comment section yeah that's it from this session bye, -bye.